and urge you to think about this in terms of saying, how do we build a coalition to examine our needs? How do we get to identifying the standards that are right for our community? How do we get a way to identify ways that, pe that people who want to connect with those good jobs and qualify for them can close the gap between where they are and where they need to be to meet their needs? And so uh, that's, that's pretty much where I'll close. Um, and uh, I'll leave you at that and field any questions or uh, ready to do anything like that. Does anyone have questions for Craig about his model, John? So I imagine with, the, uh, with that, that process and that program, uh, you know, sort of like that the 90 job applicants were, or the 90 graduates were able to uh, all get placed in, in careers. Yeah, they aren't all placed yet, but they're they're all um, queued up and ready to go. Uh, actually, I just jacked that slide up. We have uh, uh, our last group graduating today, our most <coughs> recent group graduating today. So I took that from 76 to 90. So um, we're, we're starting about two classes a month. We have classes in the mornings. We have classes in the afternoons. We have classes on the weekends. We make it convenient for the people that job that the employers are really looking for to be able to attend. Um, and so um, we are pretty much running those whenever, wherever. Did you talk with the high schools at all about partnering in with this at all? What we did, what, what we, where the high schools fit in is the fact that the community has adopted a, an educational standard. And that standard can be reached lots of different ways. You as an employer, our, in our community, we have employers that are saying, we're looking for people that hold their CPT. One of the things that we're asking them to do is put that on your application. If you, you won't know if you don't ask. And so, uh, so, but people can reach that through our academic programs, through the um, advanced manufacturing program. They can get it through corporate college. They can get it um, uh, in their high school. Uh, there are two paths for that right now. Uh, there are dual credit programs that are available through the high school and the career and technical education programs in, in high schools. And there is a new program uh, in partnership with Connexus and Ivy Tech called Higher Technology, H-I-R-E Technology, uh, that includes portions that gets people towards this, but not completed with it, but it gets people on their way to earning the certified production technician. So what we've really done is not just say all, all paths lead to Ivy Tech, it's all paths lead to the CPT. So we're all around, aligned around a particular credential. I mentioned that in our community, the ones to watch at first was Jefferson High School in Lafayette that has 120 students involved in the, um, in the certified production technician course. Um, and employers are excited about that. Uh, they're excited because they know that, that again, that's not going to solve all their problems. But, but at the beginning, I said high schools don't teach manufacturing, but high schools can teach manufacturing. <coughs> and so how do we get uh, high schools to, to incorporate that along with the um, other uh, curriculum that they're providing. Uh, but, and then, then the partnership piece plays in because what we're finding is that despite the fact that there are um, really great opportunities available to students in the high school programs, we're finding that they can't always take advantage of them because of just a, a competition for their time. Students who are trying to achieve an academic honors diploma or a 440 diploma don't always have that many spaces in their schedule at the right time to take those courses. So the Advancing Manufacturing Program says, all right, people like corporate college, why don't you figure out a way to have summer experiences for students to get the rest of that material that they couldn't get? Or uh, uh, programs a week after they graduate so that if they have pieces missing that they can finish and get to work right away. So we're looking at ways to be able to have the entire collaborative work towards that same um, outcome. It's kind of a longer question maybe, but one of the three components you said that people are looking for in finding a job is paying benefits and advancement opportunities. Um, the CBT looks like it does a really solid job of teaching kind of technical components of being a manufacturing technician. Um, are there any thoughts on including, or do you already include, like how to be a good employee, sort of the behavioral side of the? It's it's embedded in the way that we teach the course. Uh, the, the the class is uh, structured. It's it's it's, uh, it's an instructor that leads the course who's got manufacturing experience who um, had also holds the CBT and. Uh, master certification to be able to teach the class or instructor certification. 
And so their job is to infuse as much of that into the curriculum as they can through uh, project-based learning, uh, teamwork exercises, field trips, bringing in uh, employers to speak about how things work in their plants uh, and what's expected of them. Uh, can I guarantee that every one of these folks is going to show up on time for you and, and, and get along with all the co-workers? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, but what I can say is that, that in, throughout the, in order to graduate from our program, they have to have what's called exemplary attendance, which means they, list, they miss two or fewer classes or they were tardy two or fewer times. Tardy is the same as absent for us. And so, uh, so they, at, at the time, their, their reverse job fair presented themselves to employers. The attendance piece that employers were worried about has, hasn't necessarily been addressed, but it's been tested, it's been demonstrated. Uh, so we're working at that piece. Uh, there are also other assessments that we can provide to help identify um, uh, kind of risk-oriented behavior for employers as a special service um, as they're screening their workers, uh, testing things for persistence and, and for um, uh, risk-oriented behavior. This is outside the CBT or in it? Outside, outside. So, that would, so if particular employers are looking at going beyond this to be able to screen in a way that would be able to identify a higher risk of, of behaviors that might uh, result in either uh, attendance issues or uh, dependability issues or safety-related issues, there are assessments that we can provide. So there are ways to further drill down beyond the technical skills. Uh, really, I think that employers face the, the same thing everywhere, and that is that uh, really these are the skills for which people get hired that we were talking about, the ones in, in, in the curriculum. This is why people